Grace and mercy and peace are yours. From God our Father and from our risen and ascended Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God's word for our meditation this morning is from Acts chapter 1. Luke writes in my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. And after his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father has promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Welcome to the Festival of the Ascension of Our Lord, or at least the commemoration of it, because the actual Festival of Ascension was a few days ago on Thursday. It is, has to be the most underappreciated, if not even forgotten, festival of the church. And I wonder why that is. I wonder why... We make such a big deal out of so many other festivals, which is good and right, but what Ascension kind of gets pushed to the side, even forgotten about. You know, we, we make such a big deal out of Christmas when Jesus comes to this earth, and that's fine and good, but, but think about all of the pomp and circumstance that goes along with Christmas. Right? All of the extras with the decorations and the presents and the parties. We have extra services in the church And it doesn't matter when it falls, we're going to have church on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Do you know in our hymnal even, there are 32 hymns for Advent that get, kind of get us ready for Easter, or for uh, for Christmas, and there are 36 Christmas hymns. That's 66 hymns, that's almost 10% of our hymnal is, is on Advent and Christmas. Do you know how many hymns are in our hymnal for Ascension, without looking? Seven. Why is that? Why such a big deal about Jesus coming to earth, but, but not so much about Jesus leaving this earth? Well, maybe, maybe it's because we've forgotten why this day is so important that we're commemorating today. Why the ascension matters so much. This day is so important because it really is our proof that everything that Jesus came to earth to do is done. There was nothing left for him to do here, and so he could ascend back to, the, to heaven. A perfect life needed to be lived. He did it. Death for sin needed to be paid, and it was. The tomb was defeated on Easter Sunday. Everything Jesus came to do, his life and his death and resurrection, was completed, and so he could return to the Father. This day is your assurance that everything Jesus came to do is finished. But there's more than that. This festival of the ascension of our Lord is so important for us to commemorate and to remember because... It means that Jesus now sits at the right hand of the Father. 
above every rule and every authority. And he rules on behalf of you, his church, for your good over everything. This festival of ascension is so important because because this is our assurance that Jesus has gone into heaven to do as he promised to prepare a place for us. So that he can come back so that we can be with him someday. Jesus being in heaven is your proof and your assurance that you too will someday be in heaven. This festival of the ascension of our Lord is so important because it is our promise that Jesus is interceding for us. He's at the Father's side, that righteous one, who is the Father's constant reminder that all of our sins are paid for. That God is not angry at us anymore. Because that punishment was doled out on his own son. And and him being right there interceding for us as we continue to sin is that assurance that we are forgiven. We are loved by our Heavenly Father. This festival of the ascension of our Lord is just too incredibly important for us to just let pass by without realizing the importance and the magnitude of of what this event means and what Jesus is doing for us right now. And in addition to all of this still, is the ascension, is the finishing of Jesus' work here on this earth. But it's also the beginning of our work. The ascension brings meaning and purpose to our everyday life. The fact that Jesus has ascended and has not yet come back in the same way that he went into heaven means that there's work for us to do. We have a divine, grand, eternal purpose as we live our lives in this temporal world. It's easy to forget, isn't it? Just like it's easy to forget the importance of the ascension, it's so easy to forget what what the purpose and the meaning of our lives in this world really is, isn't it? I mean, think about your life. Just think about your week. Is, Is it distracted? from what you've been called to be by the risen and ascended Jesus. What is your life focused on? Maybe a different way to ask you, what's the first thing on your mind when you get out of bed in the morning? What matters most to you in this life? What is it that keeps you going day in and day out? What's on your mind throughout the day? Is it advancing your career? Is it getting more stuff and taking care of that stuff? Is it your family? Your children, your grandchildren? Is it leisure, entertainment, pleasure? Now, now all of these things in and of themselves are not bad. These two are gifts of God. But all of these things are not really what this life is all about, what you really ultimately have been called to be and to do. And if that's what you're focused on, if if that's what the purpose of your life has become is all of these worldly, earthly things, then you're misguided at best. Maybe you wish you were focused on these kinds of things. (laughs) Because maybe the focus of your life is become your failures. and your guilt, and your regrets of the past, and your fears about the future. Maybe you've become so distracted from what Jesus has called you to be and made you to be that you're so caught up in the troubles and the worries that you've maybe caused in your life or that just come from living in a sinful world. Whatever it is, friends, that's distracting you, whatever it is that's, that's taking your focus off of who you really are, the festival of the ascension of our Lord is a good time for us to refocus. 
on who we are and what we have been called to be. And if it's the case for you, then it, you know that you're not alone. I'm guessing that every other person sitting in this church with you is feeling the same way as you this morning. And, and these men here in our lesson, these disciples, these, these, these men who knew Jesus intimately and, and, and saw him face to face, they had the same trouble. Jesus is maybe just a few days before ascending into heaven, and he's reminding them about everything that's happened and why it's happened. And, and they come out with a question. They ask, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? You know what they're asking with that question? They're asking, Jesus, when are you going to give this land of Israel back to us? When are you going to kick out these Romans? When are you going to restore us back to the glory days under David and Solomon? When are you going to bring us the, the earthly peace and riches and power that we're looking for? And, and, and these disciples have ulterior motives here. You know, these are some of the same disciples who not long before this were wondering who the greatest among them was. Who, who was going to be seated next to Jesus in the kingdom? Who was going to be on his right and who was going to be on his left? Where's their focus? It's on earthly things. On earthly pleasures. On the things of this world. It sounds familiar, doesn't it? How easy it is to be distracted. How easy it is to lose focus from what we are really called to do and who we really are. And what does Jesus say to them? Guys, <laughs> he says, in effect, he says, you're, you're focused on the wrong things. I, I'm not going to give you those kinds of things because that's not what you really need right now. That's not where you need to be focused. Instead, he says to them, you're going to receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and to the ends of the earth. Jesus is saying to them, and he's saying to you this morning, let me help you refocus. Let me help you remember what your life is really all about. Let me remind you of who you are and what you have been called to be. What your purpose is, is to be his witnesses. To go and to be his witnesses. That's what your life in this world is all about. As parents, as brothers, as sisters, as friends, as relatives, as co-workers, whatever it is, you have been called to be witnesses to the people right around you, in your family, in your home, in your workplace, in your neighborhood, to witness who this Jesus is and what he has done for you and for all people. And as a church, he has called us together into this gathering to be witnesses to this community and to be witnesses to the world. And what opportunities we have, don't we? We are in a world that is hurting, in a world that is so divided, in a world filled with people who are broken, who don't have peace who are overcome with guilt, who are trying to find their, their purpose and their, and their happiness in all the wrong places. And friends, we've got the message that applies to every one of those situations. It's what you already know personally. This Jesus, this Jesus who came to take away your guilt, to pay for your sin. To give you hope beyond the grave. To give you peace as you go through this life and to give you a purpose beyond anything else that this life can try to give. Friends, it's only in the crucified and the risen and the ascended Lord Jesus that we find exactly what our hearts long for 
and that our lives need. And you know him. And through these means of grace, you have seen him. You have seen the many convincing proofs of who he is and what he has done for you and what he has done for all people. You are his witnesses. And that no matter what you are, a parent or a grandparent or an employer or an employee or a neighbor or a friend, whatever roles that God has entrusted to you and given to you in this life, is to be a witness to him in those relationships. And maybe you, you look at, at this and you think, you know, the task is just too big. How am I to be a witness for Jesus? How am I supposed to make known what this Savior has done? And, and maybe the world is too far gone for us even to make a difference anymore. You know, maybe it's better for us to just duck our heads and pray, come Lord Jesus, and just wait it out. Well, that's... That's not a bad prayer. Come, Lord Jesus. But Jesus says, until that day, there's work for you to do. And Jesus says that I even empower you to go and do that work. You see, anything that God calls us to do in this life, anything he calls us to be, he empowers us to do it and to be it. Jesus promises his disciples here that the promised Holy Spirit is going to come on you in just a few days. And then you're going to get to go and be my witnesses, starting first there in Jerusalem, and then out to Judea and Samaria, and then to the ends of the earth. And that would happen for those disciples. Just ten days after he ascended into heaven, on that festival of Pentecost, which we will celebrate next Sunday, that promised Holy Spirit came. And from there, the message of that risen and ascended Savior spread like wildfire as they became witnesses. And friends, you don't have to wait till next Sunday, till the festival of Pentecost. Because for us today, every day is Pentecost. Every day as you encounter Jesus in the gospel, as you come and receive the sacrament, as you come and you hear what this Savior has done for you and still does for you and still is going to do for you, you are equipped by that promised Holy Spirit to be his witness. When you are so convinced of these proofs of who this is, we can't help but want to share it. And friends, it's not really as scary as it sounds. It really isn't. You, you know what a witness is, right? A witness who, who testifies in court simply just shares what they've seen. Who only is asked to share what they know. And you know what you've seen. And you know what you know. This Savior Jesus. This one for all the times that you've been distracted, for all the times that, that you have lost focus of what your life in this world is really all about, what the meaning of this life is, to be his witness, for all the times that you have lost sight of that, or lost track of that, this Savior was always focused on you. This one who's laser focus in his life here on this earth was to make the Father's love known. through word and through deed and through arms stretched out on a cross as he laid down his life so that you could have the promise of a life right now filled with purpose. He rose from the dead on that Easter Sunday so that you can be assured that you have life. Life that waits for you beyond this one. A life that is waiting for you beyond death. A life with him forever. Friends, this Jesus, you know him. And you've seen him. And you get to experience him in the word. And it's there that you are empowered to simply go and to share what you know. To go and to be who God has called you to be. An heir of eternal life. 
a forgiven, redeemed child of God, and to be his witness. Jesus told his disciples to wait for and receive that power, that he would help them focus on who he is and everything that he had done for them. And then Luke writes this, as, as he ascends into heaven, they're looking intently up into the sky, and as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Yes, dear friends, we, we have one eye on the sky. We long for Jesus to come back. We long for, us to, for him to take all of us to heaven and to be with him forever. No doubt about it. There will be a day that he will come again. But then Jesus calls us to look around and to see who needs to be reminded that Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father, ruling all things for their good, who's worried about this life, worried about the future. Look around. Look right into your life, into your home, into your family, into your friends, your co-workers, who needs to know that Jesus is there interceding on their behalf. That even though they continue to fall into sin, those sins are forgiven. They're paid for. The righteous one intercedes for us with our Heavenly Father. We can be at peace. Friends, look around. and Who needs to see? Who needs to see that since Jesus is in heaven, there is a place saved for us there as he prepares that, that kingdom for us? That one who is afraid to die, that one who is overcome with, with grief from the loved one they have lost, that because Jesus is in heaven, there is our proof that our loved ones who fall asleep in Jesus are there with him forever in those heavenly mansions. Dear friends, look around. Who needs you to be a witness to this crucified and risen and ascended Lord Jesus? This festival of ascension of our Lord that we're commemorating today is, is, is a perfect time for us to refocus on, on what our lives in this world are all about. What are we here for? What God has created us to be. What God has for us to do. This one who has redeemed us. And friends, when we keep our focus on that Jesus Christ, then we know we're going to be okay. And then we know that no matter what we're doing in this life, that we're going to be able to witness to him. And for him. That when we keep our eyes focused on this Jesus, that we know that as a church, we know what we're supposed to be doing. Going out into this community and making his name known. Supporting the work of our greater church body as we send missionaries throughout our country and throughout this entire world who make his name known on our behalf. Friends, we get to be his witnesses. We get to testify to what, he has, to what he has done until he comes back. Jesus left this earth physically because, because his work was done here on this earth. And now he entrusts this work to us. Let's go with the power of God, with the power of the Holy Spirit, to go and make his name known. God grant it. Amen.